Hello and welcome to 50 Fabulous Knits. My name is Pia. I am a Danish knitter living in Italy and this channel is my happy place where I get to talk about all the yarn and the knitting. I am so happy that you're joining me here today and I really hope that you all like this episode. Today I have only one work in progress to share with you, which is ridiculous. If you've been following this channel for a while, you will know that I sometimes suffer from castanitis, where I just, with reckless abandon, cast all, all the things. This week has been about finishing all the things. I don't know if Finnish itis is a thing. But before we get into all that, I just want to talk about what I'm wearing today because this is my new pattern that was just released this week. This is the dual sweater and I have talked about it on this channel before. It's the sweater that created itself. I'm a doodler. When I'm on the phone, I'll doodle away on like pieces of scrap paper or old phone bills or new phone bills, whatever is within reach. And one day this sweater appeared in my doodling and I loved it and I decided I want to knit that. And it was such an intuitive process. It was really easy which made writing the pattern quite challenging, actually. Because when it's super easy and intuitive for you, it's so difficult to really be clear about how to make it. But I had a wonderful team of testers who did an amazing job. I can never thank those people enough for all the effort that they put in. Uh, and now the doodle is out. So I'm just gonna try to stand up so that you can see the sweater. Uh, I'll have to move the chair. Let's see here. Yeah, this will do. It is uh, a relatively short sweater with a lot of positive ease in the body. I love big, chunky, oversized sweaters, but I do want to balance all the all the positive ease so that it doesn't turn into a big tent uh, that is just I'm drowning in. So what I'll do is I'll typically either have uh, a big body uh, and then long and, and slim sleeves or huge uh, balloony sleeves and and maybe cinch the, the sweater in at the waist. With this one, uh, I made it relatively short. It's not, it's not cropped. My, my hip bone is here. So it, it hits me at my hip bone, which is the length that I actually prefer in my sweaters. But the ease is also balanced out uh, by the rather close fitting yoke and the long slim sleeves. So yeah, I love my doodle sweater. It has these big chunky cables up here and the cables, um, well, they add interest to the yoke, of course, uh, but they also help to pull the yoke in so that it, it fits really well over the shoulders. And also they provide a way for me to hide the increases for the yoke. Now on this one, I didn't do a very good job, uh, but in the, in the pattern that is out, the final pattern, the increases are hidden. Uh, they, they fall here as they do on mine, but they come behind a, a stitch, an edge stitch that goes up here so that you have really tidy lines going up here. And I'll just pop a photo of one of my testers. Um, her, 
she she knitted according to pattern. Uh, I am gonna knit myself another one according to pattern because I think it looks so pretty with uh, with these very clean lines going up here. Um, one or two <laughs> two of these cables continue on down along the sleeves and actually they go into the the ribbing as well. There's uh, no cabling in the ribbing, but the uh the pattern itself continues and yeah i love my sweater i had this one out of drops wish which is a very heavy or very very thick blow yarn and i don't know i have a love-hate relationship to blow yarns because on one hand the beautiful the very light and airy they're not they're not super warm so so actually i can wear this sweater um indoors no problem it's, it's not like an outerwear sweater um and and also the the blow yarns they have this um because the fiber is blown into uh, this tube there is some variation to the color. It's not just one color. There is some variation to it, which makes it look very much alive and pretty. And I really love that. But blow yarns will pill like bees. I have heard that some blow yarns also shed. I don't think that this one um, sheds. I mean, I'm wearing black jeans with it. But it pills. It pills like a beast. Um, I've been wearing this for a couple of weeks, pretty much nonstop. But I can see the pilling starting to happen here, so I'm gonna have to depill it soon. But that's. I mean, any soft yarn will pill, so that's okay. The thing that's not okay is that blow yarns have a tendency to grow with wise not so much with blocking but with wear uh and that never fails to to annoy me because i'm pretty hard wearing on my sweaters and one thing i'll always do is i'll push up the sleeves i could of course knit elbow length sleeves but i don't know i don't like the look of elbow length sleeves i love the idea that i can Ah, pull my sleeve over my knuckles and be really cozy. But because I pull them up every time I have to do something, the ripping will, it, it will get like sloppy and, and, but of course then I can wash and block it and, and it goes back in shape and all is good for a while at least. But it is something to keep in mind if you're working blow yarns. I would actually like to try to combine a blow yarn with a silk mohair and see if the stability from the, the silk mohair would actually keep the blow yarn in place. But then again, if I combine it with the silk mohair, it's going to be warm. Maybe I'll just live with the fact that blow yarns do what they do. As long as they're pretty, right? <laughs> I will, of course, link to the pattern in my show notes below in the description box. It comes in six uh, sizes. Um, and yeah, I'm wearing mine with quite a lot of positive ease. Uh, but some of my testers also knit theirs with almost no positive ease. And that looked so pretty as well. So you can play around with the sizes. There is no hard and fast rules that you need this amount of, of ease in it. It will actually work uh, either way. So I hope you'll enjoy this sweater. I am absolutely loving mine for sure. As I mentioned, I only have one active whip. I also have my cabled goodness, but that hasn't gotten any love for quite some time. I need to rip back a section again, so I'm a bit hesitant to start working on that one. But this week I have been finishing all the things. I've been clearing up my needles, 
both because I wanted to, uh, but also because I know that when I come to Denmark this weekend, there will be some very special yarn for some very special projects waiting for me. So I wanted to like get everything finished and done so that I can enjoy it. So I have lots of finished objects to share. And the first of them is my chicken knit sweater. Um, this is big. I knit this in, in a pretty large size because I wanted an oversized sweater for the winter. And because I used uh, the, the fingering weight yarn, it's super drapey and light and I just tuck it into my jeans or whatever. But yeah, I finished this. I finished the pattern. I sent it out in testing. Uh, and I do hope to be able to publish this on uh, November 8th, my birthday. I think that would be very fitting because this is this is one of my favorite sweaters. I created this years ago and it has been on my blog as a free pattern. But there was a lot of mistakes in, in the pattern and uh, also I think that the yoke wasn't really balanced very well uh, and, and there were not enough sizes. So I have reworked the whole thing. And uh, yeah, as I said, it's in testing. Um, they are working very, very hard to get this ready. And I'm loving it. I, I love these light fingering weight sweaters. I mean, this is super cozy and nice. But these are so versatile because you can you can use them anytime. They're not too warm, but you still do get a little warmth and you can always use it under a cardigan or a light jacket and yeah. Um, I knit this one out of the, the main color here, the green is the yarn that I bought when I was in Siena. It is Malabrigo Sock in the colorway Turner. And I think I've said it before, it's not going to be my favorite yarn ever because it's it does have sort of a plasticky feel to it. I will say that it softened up a bit with blocking, but still it's like crinkly, just a little bit crinkly. Uh, but the color is so pretty that I don't care about the sweater being a little bit crinkly. Uh, I chose to go with all hand dyed yarns for this one to allow the patterns here, the color work on the yoke to blend together. Um, so let me see, I have this one, the old version. And here you can see the pattern a little, a little bit better uh, but I chose to to really allow these these color work patterns to just blend together to create this beautiful autumn like goodness <laughs> so the brown color is my own hand dyed yarn uh, on my sock face uh, it's called Big Bear Storp yarn uh, the yellow is also my own, uh, Golden Bird. And then this one is a very special yarn because I have been trying for a long time to put colors together for this sweater. And I have been going back and forth, back and forth. And it is it has actually been really difficult for me to put together these colors. But when I had the the green, the brown, and the yellow is like, yes, this will work. But I need the one color to rule them all. The one that would bind everything together and unite the colors, so to speak. And I found this in, in this very beautiful, variegated color. It's from one of our talented Danish hand dyers by Kilarek. And I will, of course, link to her shop in, in my show notes. I just bought a, a mini skein uh, and I used up every single bit. I had like two inches back and left, something like that. But yeah, hence it's like 
chicken knit. I was talking on my last English episode about this Danish tradition of chicken knit uh, that inspired this sweater. So here it is and I couldn't be happier with it. One thing that I am so happy to have off the needles is the Harry Potter scarf for my granddaughter. Uh, yeah, she really wanted a Ravenclaw uh, scarf and now it's here. And it, it was not a pleasure knitting it, but it was a pleasure thinking about her, thinking about how happy she would be. So all in all, yeah. Uh, it's pretty long, but I saw she did have another uh, scarf, a storeboard one that was also really long. So I decided to just go for it, uh, use up all the yarn and yeah, here it is. This was a kit, uh, I've talked about this before, a kit that she purchased without knowing that it was a knitting yarn kit. Um, but now it's the scarf that she wanted and I can't wait to give it to her here this weekend. By the way, when I was putting on uh, this one, the patch, I did, <laughs> I did a very unprofessional thing, uh, uncool thing. I glued it and then I just stitched it lightly around the edges but it, I tried to just sew it on first but ah, yeah glue then you're free to work with it without it going anywhere I also finished <laughs> my shift Andrea Maury's beautiful pattern here the shift I did change the model a little. Um, I modified the stitch gauge. Uh, I used another yarn. But yeah, I'm super happy with the result. Uh, it's just, it's perfect and it will go perfectly with my new winter coat. I have been wearing it already. Um, when we go out in the evenings, it's chilly and, and this is just perfect. It's so much easier to pop on than a shawl. So if you're intimidated by big shawls and how to wear them, I would say go for the shift. This is this is such a cool thing and a really fun project to work on with all the, the slip stitch patterns and having fun deciding which color to work with next. And yeah, I cannot recommend this enough. This was this was such a fun to knit on. The colors that I chose, uh, the main color, the brown, is the same as in, in my chicken knit, uh, my own storp yarn, the leftovers from the chicken knit. Uh, the black is just uh, a baby, uh, baby merino, yeah, drops baby merino in black. Um, then I have uh, Again, one of my own hand dyed yarns, this golden one, it's called Goldilocks or Gullock. Uh, and then I have this, um, this is a soft striping sock yarn from, again, one of our amazing Danish hand dyers called A Lonely Sock Lady. She does the most amazing soft striping sock yarns. And this was just a mini skein that uh, came along when I bought my uh, my yarn for the Christmas socks uh, at, at her shop. So yeah, I think they're working together beautifully. I really think uh, these colors complement each other and for sure they complement my winter coat. So I'm very, very happy with this. This is going to get a lot of wear because it's so easy to wear. You don't have to think about it. You just pull it over your head. That's a good thing. And since I was um, thinking about winter and accessories and my ACAL 2021, where with the 
that's the accessory along that I am running. I should probably have mentioned that. I am running a, a cow, an accessory along where we knit all the accessories for either fall or spring, depending on where you are in the world. And yeah, I have been, I have been making quite a lot of accessories. I love them. They're such, they're such lovely little projects. Uh, you get to finish them pretty quickly and, and it's something that will just brighten up your day. So yay for the accessories. So I also made a pair of uh, fingerless mitts. Um, <laughs> of course, and the, the color is blowing out slightly, but I think it's a pretty good representation. It's the leftovers um, from my family sweater and the vest that I was wearing on my last podcast. It's um, the, the Harrisville Designs nightshades. When I was in the US last, I bought what I thought was a sweater's quantity and I got a big sweater, I got a vest and a pair of fingerless mitts. So we gave her that. I really wanted to use every little scrap of that yarn because it's so lovely. For the mitts, I uh, actually paired it with a silk mohair just to get some extra warmth. And also because I wanted to stretch the yarn a little, I wasn't sure if there was going to be enough. I rolled my leftovers up in two little balls and weighed them to make sure that, that they were the same. And then I just started knitting. So there's no pattern for these. I'm, I'm going to swatch. Yay, I'm that good. I need a swatch to figure out how many stitches I needed for 10 centimeters. Then I measured my hand on the widest spot here and figured out how many stitches do I need. That's the number of stitches that I cast on. Then I used a smaller needle for the, the ripping down here. Uh, I changed to the larger ripping for the stockinette and then I just I just kept trying it on uh, to see when I should start the increases for the thumb. I did the increases like you would do a normal set of raglan increases and again tried it on and until I could see yeah that's enough then I put the sleeves for the thumb on hold picked up uh, an extra sleeve to to cover the gap here and knit around until I ran out of almost ran out of yarn and then I just bound off. Um, they are pretty long so I could see myself sometimes rolling them down slightly or pulling them over my fingers if it's really cold. And what I then did was I embroidered some flowers on them. And it's it's very subtle because it's the same yarn that I used. And I just did some very simple flowers and some French knots. And I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I'm sure you can guess which mitten is number two. <laughs> but you know what? They shouldn't be alike. They should be similar but not alike. Um, I like that and I love my fingerless mitts. It's all I wear in winter. It needs to be really cold for me to to wear real mittens. I, I really like having my fingers out. So yay for those. One more finished object and then I'm done because I always have also finished my picking socks. Um, this is a Danish pattern and I don't think it's translated into English. So Christina, if you're watching, you should translate this pattern because I love it. I love this, uh, lace section that, uh, like it points up here and there's also some lace. It's super difficult to see. I'm just going to pull one off so that you can see it because it's really cleverly made. 
So you have this, um, you have this lace work up here, a little triangle, and then it starts down here as a triangle so that these two point to each other. I knit them a bit longer than the pattern calls for, and I should, of course, followed the directions. If I had only read through the pattern, I could have seen that, that she actually suggests that you down here can make them longer. But yeah, yeah, I always think I know best, right? But then this lace just continues all the way uh, on top of the foot. And of course, you have stockinette stitch uh, under the foot. Uh, I did my um, short row heel because that's what fits my foot. Um, yeah, they're lovely. They're perfect. I really love them. I have no idea what the yarn is, but I know that I like it. So I would like to find out was just these two balls of yarn that I had laying, um, no tacks, no nothing. Uh, but it, I'm sure there is some nylon content. I, I really think that, that I can feel the nylon. If, if not, I will, I'll know pretty soon, right? But yeah, lovely, lovely socks and they're pia colored, they're dark brown. They don't do colors on my feet because I can see my feet all the time. So, no. So that was it. Now my needles are almost empty. As I said, I have the old wear, the, the cabled sweater. And then I, of course, cast on something new because I need something to knit on uh, on the drive home and, and also I mean today I can't not have anything going so this is some very special yarn that I'm going to talk more about uh, at the end of the episode because it's something that I bought when we were in Milan um, it is some sort of an alpaca wool blend and I don't know the details of this yarn because I wasn't aware that it came without tags that I should have looked at the shop to see what it was but it's it's squishy it's a rather heavy yarn I'm guessing an iron weight something like that and it's super soft. I mean, super soft. You can wear this next to skin. It's super soft and it's just so nice and a lovely color that I really enjoy. I did not cast this on for a week, something like that. I had it laying two big skeins, 300 grams each. And it was I was petting it and I was enjoying it, but I did not cast it on. But when I finished all this stuff, I cast on for a big, chunky cardigan, like the style my grandfather would wear. But this is where I'm at. You can clearly see where I'm going with this, right? It is a V-neck cardigan so I'm gonna um, put ribbing all the way around not like neckline and button bands but going all the way around and I actually don't think I'm gonna put in buttons because this is gonna be this big chunky thing that I can just curl up in I'm gonna put in pockets pockets that I can stuff my things into and I'm gonna have really long and nice sleeves and yeah it is so much fun. Um, I started knitting one shoulder. I cast on with a provisional cast on, knit one shoulder down, knit the other shoulder. And then I picked up the stitches from the provisional cast on and cast on some extra stitches for the neckline. So it's completely seamless up here. And then I just knit back and forth until I was uh, onto the sleeve and um, yeah I'm still knitting back and forth it's a cardigan I'm not going to steep this one I don't mind pulling so much um, it's okay 
So yeah, uh, I have put everything together. So I'm just knitting back and forth. And then I also picked up stitches for this sleeve just to see if, if it would work like I thought that it would. And it did. So yeah, I am enjoying this so much. There is something so gratifying with, by, I don't know, waiting, holding, holding out, not just going with your first impulse, but actually holding out for this special occasion where all your needles are empty and you can cast on something that you really longed to cast on. So yeah, I am enjoying this. I am going to be knitting on it all the way through Europe. Um, and yeah, I am using some pretty heavy needles. Um, is it five or 5.5 mil? I think it's five millimeter needles. And I'm using my Lucky needles. Um, I bought the, the small set of Lucky needles with the, the short tips because they are so handy for sleeves and for baby knits and yeah I'm I'm really enjoying these I like uh, knitting with wooden needles except for when I'm doing um, lace work or things where I need to, to in, have a, a good pointy tip because wooden needles are never going to be as sharp as the steel needles so yeah I have two sets of steel needles and two sets of wooden needles and I love them all each for their own thing so yes I am enjoying this and um, I can't wait to see how far this drive back to Denmark will take me um, as I mentioned, it did come in 300 gram skeins. I bought 600 grams because that should be more than enough. I know it's, it's enough. Of course it's, if, of course it's enough. If not, I have the perfect excuse to go back to Milan. So there you go. Um... I'm just going to talk a little bit about our trip to Milan uh, and the yarn shops that I went to in there because um, a little more than a week ago uh, we decided that we would just spend a couple of days in Milan. We live pretty close to the city, it's 100 kilometers so we can go whenever we want to but this time we decided to take a hotel for just one night so that we would have two full days in there and, and really explore the city. Um, typically when you go to Milan, you end up in the area around the, the big Duomo, uh, the church and the galleries, the shopping galleries and, and the shopping area surrounding the church. And, and it's nice and it's pretty and it's, it's overwhelming and, and all that. But Milan has so much more to offer. The thing about the city is that it's very widespread and you really, really don't want to go around Milan in a car. Like, well, obviously a lot of people want to. It's one big traffic jam at all hours. Just imagine peak rush hour LA traffic. There you go. So um, we brought our electric scooters, like little push scooters, only adult size and, and electric. And they were perfect. They allowed us to get around town uh, like easily, quickly. We could cover a lot more ground than if we had just been walking. Uh, and we could park the car just a little outside of town and just, um, we had like a, a rucksack uh, with our luggage and, and could go on the scooters into the hotel and just 
roam around town happily. And it was, it was lovely. So if you ever go to Milan, I really suggest you can rent uh, e-scooters in there. And I really recommend that because it's so much easier than going around in a car. And it's actually also easier than going around on a bike. It's just the perfect form of transport in, in a lot of big cities, I would say. And since we did have <laughs> the e-scooters, I could also like talk Peter into visiting a couple of yarn shops, uh, which were, uh, I guess it's safe to say that they were a bit off the beaten track, especially one of them. Uh, but it took us down past a beautiful quarter with canals and little bars and restaurants and through a beautiful little park into this tiny yarn shop where I don't think they've ever seen a tourist there before. Uh, but it was beautiful and, and I asked if I could do a little video and they allowed me to do that. And it's actually pretty typical for what you would find in, in like almost every city here. Um, but it's this, this kind of yarn shop. I got a little bit of yarn. Um, I got some German yarn. Obviously, that's what you get when you're in Italy. It's crazy. But I just, I fell madly in love with these three balls of self-striping yarn in the most amazing colors. I am thinking a black uh, yoked sweater with lots of color work, maybe all over color work even in these three. Wouldn't that be amazing? I really think it would. Um, I am gonna put, because I'm not sure where they're from, but I'll try to figure it out and put it in my show notes because they're really, really pretty. Um, and she had some uh, little samples knit up so that I could see the, the stripes and yeah, absolutely lovely. We also visited another yarn shop and that was very special. It was unlike any yarn shop I've ever seen before. It's called Lana uh, and they only carried their own yarns. But what yarns? I mean, that, that's where I got this. The yarns is just, it's covering every inch of the walls in there. It's in huge paper bags. It's on cones and some of it is wound up in balls. And there's just any combination of woolly fibers that you could ever dream about. It's there. It, I just, I just wanted to live there. <laughs> it was so pretty and they were super nice. I also did a little video in there so that you can see it. And yeah, should you ever go to Milan, don't worry about the, the Duomo. It's, it's a big church. Go to Lana. Wow, that is special. So yeah, um, we did have a good time in Milan and um, I have put together some footage from our trip. I'll just put at the end of the episode. Uh, you will see that we also visited their huge cemetery where there are all these mausoleums and uh, it, it's unlike any cemetery I've ever seen before, but we had a great time walking around out there and we went up to the area around Corso Como, which is like the very hip fashion area. Um, there's yeah, a beautiful shop up there. It's a shop, it's a boutique hotel, it's a cafe, it's a bookstore. And it's just, ah, it's just a nice place to hang out. I didn't buy anything because everything's crazy expensive in there. But I like just going around, taking in the ambience and getting inspired. And yeah, 
we ate a lot of good food and we did something that we never did before we went up to the rooftop of the duomo ah oh, and we went like in the early evening and the light was beautiful and oh, just being up there above the city and looking down at everything and and getting really close to all these amazing little little thingies it is so heavily decorated this this church so yeah that was definitely a recommendation again if you ever go it's worth it's it's worth it to go up there so beautiful so yeah the last couple of days have been all about packing and preparing the house for winter because we're going to be away for quite a while we're going to go to denmark for a week a little more than a week and then we're going to go to dubai to sit in quarantine and we do know that the word is that the u.s borders will open in november but as long as it's not like okay here we go they're open we're just gonna sit out our quarantine and peter also has some work to do in dubai and i'm gonna bring my little nieces so that we can roam around the town and go to some theme parks and yeah we're gonna have a lot of fun and then yeah off to texas then back to denmark to celebrate christmas so yeah it's going to be a long time before we come down here again, which is on one hand horrible to think about, but then on the other hand, I'm going to be doing lovely things that I can't wait to do. So there you go. So we're preparing the house for winter and I have started packing up all my yarns and my stuff and tomorrow very early we're gonna go we, we want to beat traffic <laughs> we're going past a couple of larger cities and, and we want to be clear of those before morning traffic hits so yeah we have an early night tonight very early morning and tomorrow night we're gonna be in Denmark which is lovely too I'm going to put some footage, small videos and pictures from our trip to Milan. I really hope that you'll enjoy it. And uh, I hope that you're knitting on something wonderful that brings you loads of joy. And I hope that I will see you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.